Hey there YouTube, this is Booty Cross here and here we are with the tune of or the video on how to tune a car for reverse shifting. But before we get started I wanna thank a guy named Ford Power and Shakira for helping me out with my circuit racing because I've not only enjoyed circuit racing, I've increased my lap or decrease, increase, I don't know, whatever it is. I've pulled far better lap times than I was pulling before I met these guys. I mean uh, ever since I've been racing with them or talking to them and, and you know taking their advice, I've I've started pulling some pretty good lap scores. I've at least taken off, shaved off a, a few seconds off my laps, and I'm really really proud of myself for circuit racing, not quitting. Now then, uh, once again before we get started, I want to say that I have still been doing circuit racing. I haven't quit. I still stuck to my one month plan. It's I'm at the fourth week. I know I've said that I started circuit racing like about uh, two months ago, or like somewhere in May. But I kind of rage quit it because I wasn't getting it, and I came back uh, last week, and now I'm just starting to just uh, I'm starting to understand it a lot better. I'm doing a lot better than I was before. Then, but anyway, let's get started. So, oops, not upgrade. I'm sorry. First, you need to find a car. Now, then, for reverse shifting, you want to find a mid-engine to rear-engine car. If you pick a car that's front engine, you're going to be having a lot of oversteering problems. So, just like just like how whenever you're drifting. Uh, a regular car the right way you'll be uh, spinning out except it's gonna be a weird spin out it's like the opposite spinning out even though, you're still, even though you still are spinning out but anyway so we're going to go over to Lamborghini and we're gonna see if we can find a car and I think this one would be fine so now the, next, the thing is about reverse drifting is you need to have a long final what's it called like a final gear ratio whatever it's called final drive I, I don't know what it's called but uh, let me see what it's called. Yeah, final drive. Okay, you need to have a long final drive for this. If you don't, what's going to happen is that your cars are going to bottom out, and this is going to keep uh, this is going to keep redlining. If your red lines are going to catch grip, and you can't have enough to pull your car. So, right now your car is being pulled by the rear. So just follow follow as I upgrade my car. Now then, you can have stock tires, but I like religiously run drag tires and everything I have, and plus. Since it is reverse shifting, I want my car to pull. I would rather have low PSI in the front and uh, I mean in the rear. Uh, yeah, I'd rather have low PSI in the rear and make my rear tires very fat so I can have that extra pull. And that'll help. But one problem is that this thing is on all wheel drive. and you take that off and put a rear wheel drive. Okay, now we're on rear wheel drive. All right. Now we're going to go over to our transmission and just add this to so. So make sure you guys are following if you have a Lambo. Now in this this can only work with certain cars depending on the track like even on small tracks you're gonna need a lot of power unless you're gonna like uh, go extremely light with the throttle but I mean for me I'm just a smack I'm just a guy who's like to smash the throttle down and just floor it or whatever you want to call it so we're just gonna keep on upgrading and yes having all this power is necessary because you want to be able to reach your maximum reverse uh, reverse gear or whatever it's called and the tuning is very very simple you really don't have to tune the car to be honest all you gotta do is just adjust your gear ratio. The camera does not even matter, and there you go. <laughs> That's all you have to do to make a reverse shifting tune. Now then, I, I don't really know how to. Uh, the camera doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna lower this thing because my experience with circuit racing this helps me turn a little bit sharper. So I'm just gonna lower that. The springs doesn't matter. You can just adjust it to whatever you like. I'm just gonna lower that as well. Now then, the braking force. I just like to put mine at 100%. Just because it's a habit, and I'll, I'll be using my emergency brake a lot, so it really doesn't matter. Now your acceleration should be at 100 because you want to, oops, because you want to have full power to your rear, or you know, full torque. And now we're about to get started. So if you are a beginner reverse shifter, I would recommend going on a small track like school circuit. It's nice and small. The corners, the corners are you know kind of easy. Even though I still screw up because this, I'm not used to drifting this Lambo. But I have practiced with this car just to make sure I can be somewhat decent before the video because I haven't done this in a while. Now then, a few tips before we start. Um, or not tips, but warnings. Weight transferring is a thing that will probably kill you in reverse shifting. Reverse shifting is really simple. It's not hard at all. But the thing that gets me and everybody else would have to be the weight transferring. Now then, when I say that, if I were to go down here. Oh, by the way. Um, for saving a reverse shift, like if you're about to if you're about to lose it, I highly recommend lowering your or raising your first uh, your first gear, and I'll show you that in a second. 
So I'll show you why I have that in a little bit. Oops, it's gonna go down here. Get the speed. Really don't need all the speed, but it's just whatever. Okay. So now we're looking backwards, about to get started. And you can see that my my acceleration for my reverse my uh, reverse gear is pretty long, and that's good. You need a car with long reverse ropes. It's not gonna end well. Now then, weight transferring can be kind of hard. You have to just let your car do it. You know, do it itself. If you force it, what's gonna happen is this. Like let's say I'm doing like this. I'm gonna try to force it, and then you're gonna start getting locked, and it's not gonna look so well. I mean, right now it didn't really look too good. I mean, it looked like I had it under control, but. You'll understand what I'm talking about when you get locked. When you get locked, you're, you have no control of your car anymore. You're just going to fly into the wall. You can't steer. This just, just gone. It's like you lost all front traction. And it really sucks whenever that happens. So you would say, oh, why don't you put front tire with? Well, I, I wouldn't do that because I just want my car to drag. Or I want my rear to uh, pull my car. And so my front end just be as loose as possible. So now when it comes to weight transferring on certain parts what I recommend doing is after I'll show you on the first corner um, I will drop in the first gear and dropping in the first gear can, can straighten out your car so if you're losing it or if you're angle locked you can just do this first gear now and it straightens you out and it saves you so if you're a beginner I recommend using your first gear to weight transfer because that's what I did if you feel confident enough, you can just rely on your steadiness of your thumb and letting your car straighten out itself by giving a little gas. But that can cause some oversteer every now and then. Now then, here's another thing that can kill your drifts. Is whenever you're drifting in reverse, letting go of the throttle can only be done to a minimum. If you let it go all the way, I'll show you what will happen. Is that your car may or may not oversteer, or whatever it's called. You see, you have too much angle just from letting off the throttle. So, you always want to have your... Uh, your, your uh, car gas up all the way or at least keep it above uh, the two grand mark like right there or your speed or whatever just get, make sure you're giving it a little throttle no matter what situation you're in even if you're about to hit somebody or hit the wall or well, if you're about to hit somebody you might as well just stop you're not really gonna win anyway but I'm pretty sure you get what I'm saying so just be careful watch your weight transferring you'll be fine now then the, the thing it's just like drifting you know you, I can't really explain it, but you just do the exact opposite of what you do when you regularly drive. So I mean, I, right now I'm turning with the corner, and it's just couldn't get any easier than that. So I'm not sure if I'm helping explaining things better, but hopefully you guys can understand how this works. And the car does matter. I hate to say, it, but it really does. Unless you're, I don't know, like I'm not saying I'm the best at this, but. I'm pretty sure somebody out there who can drift front engine cars a lot better than these mid engine cars. I'm pretty sure people, if this does catch on, people are going to start hating mid engine cars because they're going to say, oh, it's too easy. You need to make it harder for yourself because I'm doing it harder. And, you know, that's just how people are sometimes. But that's just about it for this video. So I guess that's all there is to it. It really isn't that hard, to be honest, guys. I mean, you just put the final drive all the way to the um, to the lowest setting. Your PSI has nothing to do with it. But here is one thing I would say: is I don't recommend any camber. Like if you use any camber on the rear, I mean you're losing traction and it you're just losing speed overall and it doesn't look good. I mean, if if you want to use camber, then you can just go ahead. But personally, I like to drift fast Shout in reverse. Now that's actually funny to say because how slow I am at drifting. But yeah. I like to drift fast in reverse and I can't do that often because it makes my hand hurt for some reason so that's why I don't really do do this much but I may make a reverse drifting montage for you guys if you guys are interested in watching that but this is this is basically it. this is basically it now then like I said it all depends on the car the car and the transmission and the engine and I have tested out a few cars with a few Ferraris and I've noticed that a few Ferrari engines had some kind of effect with the uh, with the uh, speed of your uh, reverse gear, which is or whatever it is, the ratio I would say, and it's it's a bit annoying to find the perfect car because you're gonna spending a lot of money to find it, and I spent at least about a million so far, a million credits trying to find the one car. I haven't sold the cars yet, but the Lambo takes the cake. Now you could always use an X class, but people will probably just kick you off for using the X class, and I would love if I could find me a S class. I probably could if I would have stopped using drag tires so much, but 
I just prefer it. It would be nice to have an S-Class reverse dripping car. Maybe a Lotus or Opal. Who, who knows? Anything mid-engined. Now then, I would show you guys why I wouldn't use a front engine car, but I think I'll just, I think it's best to let you guys figure it out yourself. So, I, uh, that, that's basically about it. I'm about to put this paint up on, I'm about to head up online line and start dripping backwards. You guys enjoy yourself, try this out if you like it, let me know if I helped out, you know, just post it in the comment and maybe suggest another car for me to do. I mean, I would do it, but it really isn't that much to it. It's not hard at all, just do a few gear adjustments and that's about it. It's just the drifting and the weight transferring is a difficult thing because you have to learn how to do this, do the exact opposite of what you're doing right now. But I hope I cleared some things up for you guys. Any questions at all, please post it in the comment. I'll be answering anything you have to ask. All right, subscribe, rate, comment, and I'll see you guys later.